，又係我守門員日常嘅阿澤啊。咁啊，嚟到日常訪談嘅第二集啦。咁今次訪問嘅嘉賓係邊個呢？我哋出到嚟外景喎。咁如果深水清嘅朋友呢，見到呢對手套呢，其實都可能會估到啦。咁今次呢，受訪嘅嘉賓呢，就係標準流浪嘅門將啊，來自烏克蘭嘅奧利斯。So, morning, Alex. Uh, thanks for coming to be our guest today. And it's our honor to have you here. My pleasure. And uh, first question actually is a very common question, like because we all know your name uh, pronunciation in Cantonese is O L C, right? And because in English name we can see on your Instagram it starts with an A, and but sometimes we see on some various of website it starts with an O. So. Do, do you mind to teach us how to properly address your name? Okay, so my parents call me Alex. Alex, okay. Yeah. Why Why do I have that O in yeah. the beginning? Yeah. Because I'm from Ukraine. Ukraine, yeah. And Ukrainian version of this name starts oh. with O. Oh, okay. So I should have O in passport. Oh, okay. So therefore, officially, yeah. it starts with O. It starts with O. But honestly, but, uh, apart from Hong Kong, yeah. no one called me uh, Alexi before. Never <laughs> ever in my life. So everyone calls me Alex. Okay. So I'm Alexi only in Hong Kong. Okay. So, so yeah. So we can all call you Alex. This is yeah, fine. Alex right? is fine. Okay, yeah. Alex. Sure. So d when do you ever start playing football? And do you start as a goalkeeper? Uh, I start as a goalkeeper from the oh. beginning. Okay. Um, I was seven years old. Yeah. And my dad. My dad and his dad, so my dad and my granddad, yeah. they took me to, to the stadium. Yeah. It was national team game. Oh, okay. Our Olympic stadium, mm -hmm. 100, 100k <laughs> crowd. Yeah. Uh, I was I was shocked. And mm -hmm. That was that was the day where that was the day when, when I fell in love with football. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and, and afterwards uh, I started I started to play and. I cannot explain right now, but, but yeah, from day one, I, ch I chose to be a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. that, that was my biggest passion. I was always fascinated by the uh, saves of, of those goalies uh, way back in the days. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that was more interesting for me than the score of the goalies. I see. Okay. So that's why. Do you have a specific uh, like football idol to make you become a goalkeeper or not really? Um, I wouldn't say idols, yeah. but uh, when I was younger, yeah. I loved to watch uh, Gianluigi Buffon. Mm -hmm. still, of course, yeah, still, yeah, still playing. <laughs> In my opinion, he's the best goalkeeper in football history. Cool. Um, I loved uh, Edwin van der Sar. Mm -hmm. I loved Nelson Dida. Yes. So those, those three were the goalies that I really love to, to watch. So they are really football legends indeed. Yeah. Besides football idol, do you have any team you particularly support? So uh, I'm a fan of Juve. I'm a fan oh, of Juve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when when I was uh, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a graduate of Dynamo Kiev Academy. Oh, right. And back in the days, Dynamo Kiev played. Uh, they also played Champions League now, yeah, yeah, but yeah. before they they went to quarterfinal, semi-final of Champions League, True. so they yeah. were extremely strong. True. And that was the season when I was a ball boy. Our team, we were yeah. ball boys yeah. um, in Champions League. Mm -hmm. And I, rem I remember Juve came to, to Kiev, um, and it was Zidane, Edward Davids, oh. the Piero. Uh, crazy oh, team. Crazy. And, and since, since then, since then um, I'm a fan, yeah. until, until now. Okay, fair enough. So, as a UV fan, do you rate uh, Wojciech Szczesny and uh, who do you compare to Buffon now? Um, I think he's a great goalkeeper. Yeah. I think he's a great goalkeeper. I think he's uh, a bit underestimated mm -hmm. because, in my opinion, he's uh, he's in top. Or so top top ten, top ten in the world, yeah. but, mm. but people don't really say that much about him True. as about uh, Alison or oh, or uh, uh, Oblak, uh, Oblak right. yeah. or Derson or whoever. Yeah. But if you think about that, I think it's a uh, it's kind of really tough thing that what he did because he came right after Buffon. Yeah? True. He was the the biggest legend in 
in, uh, in Italian football. Right. And then it has to be a really tough task True. to play after him. Yep. And I think he could great with that. Exactly. So I think it was a really tough thing to do right. mentally. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think he's doing great. So, True. so I think he's a great goalkeeper, definitely. True. Talking about your life in Ukraine and yeah. Poland. How do you feel when you get signing a contract with uh, Dynamo Kiev's second team and uh, what was it like to play with them? Um, okay, when I signed with uh, the second team of Dynamo Kiev, yes, it was a natural thing because mm. I spent around 10 years before mm. uh, in Dynamo Kiev uh, yeah. structure. Yeah. Because um, I went there when I was uh, 8 years old. It was. Uh, football school first okay and when you're 11 12 you move to academy mm -hmm. after you finish an academy when you're 16 you move to 13 mm -hmm. after the 13 you move to second team reserve team so uh -huh. that was just a natural uh -huh. natural thing for me sure. um, uh, in general the, it's the biggest it's the biggest club uh, in Eastern Europe mm -hmm. it's a huge club and um, and uh, Dynamo Kiev Academy is probably the strongest academy for me from from that part of the world okay. and mm, the competition is huge because it's not only kids from Kiev or Ukraine right. are going there um, all the kids from uh, former oh. Soviet Union countries oh, right. which are Russia, Georgia, Armenia and all those sure. 15 countries they want to get there because it's just it's this one of the strongest academy there so that was an honor that was an honor I'm happy that that I've been there because uh, they, they 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 give a uh, really good school to to, to 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 young players. That's for sure. I see. I see. So, why did you like decide to move away from your homeland to play in Poland, which you have played there in I mean in Poland for more than like five years? Yeah, I always wanted to play in the best in Europe, mm -hmm. and when I was 18 or 19. Yeah. Um, I still had a contract with my with my with my club, but then I decided to change my life drastically. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I didn't know anyone in Poland. Exactly. I just uh, I just had a friend. So he gave me a contact of his agent. Mm -hmm. um, I had a chat with him, and then I bought one way ticket, and I, and I moved. I broke my contract with my club, and, oh, then, really? and then I decided to move to Poland. Um, Very brave decision. That's that's. that's that's, that's my style. That's my style. <laughs> very, suits you very well. So, just now when we mentioned about Wojciech Chesney, I believe from, I'm not sure if that's correct, but from Wikipedia it says you signed for a club called uh, Corona Cliche, something like that. Yeah. yeah. You get to work with Wojciech Chesney's father. Yeah. Is it true? Yeah, like, that's true. So, as a father of the current Juventus goalkeeper, how was it like to work with him? And do you get to meet Wojciech yourself? So yeah, I worked with uh, with what's his dad. Yeah. His name is Maciej Szczęsny. Yeah. He's a he's a legend in Poland. Yeah. Uh, he was national team goalkeeper. He was a great goalkeeper, and uh, he's a great goalkeeper coach. Mm -hmm. um, great personality, big personality, definitely. Um, he won, he was one of those goalkeeper coaches, which is very important for goalies who yeah. who protects uh, mm -hmm. goalkeepers no matter what. True. He doesn't allow to to be involved in, uh, in goalie's life to anyone. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and he has a great knowledge, great experience. That was a great experience, and uh, I've met Wojtek for a few times. Oh really? Yeah. Just I think it's just natural thing, mm -hmm. but yeah, we're not friends or whatever. Oh okay. So you get to meet. I see. Uh, then you moved to Hong Kong after playing sometimes in like uh, Portugal, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then Poland, and then back and forth, and then you finally moved to Hong Kong. Oh yeah. Okay. Why did you decide to come to Hong Kong instead of other countries in Asia? And what was your first impression of Hong Kong? Okay, that's that's a good question because um, I can't explain that logically. Yeah. It's pretty pretty similar to to the way I moved to Poland. Mm -hmm. um, I've never been to Hong Kong. Yeah. I didn't know anyone here. Mm -hmm. And um, I had quite a tough period before mm -hmm. I decided to move here. And 
um, I decided to change my life drastically. Mm -hmm. And then I just made a research um, and uh, I just checked where yeah. foreign goalkeeper potentially can play because I'm pretty sure you know that foreign goalkeeper can't play uh, in every single country because True. of foreign limits and all yeah. the things. True. And then I checked and I saw that um, I saw that uh, some foreign goalies are playing here. Mm -hmm. Then I had a chat with Boyan Malisic, who played uh, in South China. Okay. And and yeah, and then, and then I, I bought one-way tickets. And then I came here for the second time in my life. <laughs> I did that. I'm pretty happy that I did that. I think it was a great decision. Which part of Hong Kong, for now, do you like the most? Like, for example, the view, the cuisine, or the culture? Um, I don't think it will be some something particular, mm -hmm. something in particular. I think I just I just love Hong Kong itself, and mm -hmm. I think it's a great place. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I love to travel, so I've been to many countries in the world, and for me, Hong Kong is the best city in the world. Really? Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, I cannot say that I like uh, cuisine or, <laughs> or view yeah. or whatever. Okay. Just in general. Yeah. Just in general, I love this place. Mm -hmm. um, I love. The way I feel here, mm -hmm. I feel here at home, okay. and um, and uh, yeah, that's an amazing place. Only positives, only positives. I, I, I love. It's very weird as well because I'm calm person. I'm quite calm person, yeah. and you know the rhythm of the life here is crazy. <laughs> you always need to run around. You yeah. always need. You always You're late. rushing all the time. Exactly. But for whatever reason, I feel extremely calm here. I feel very comfy here. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I just, I just love it. It's a great place. It's a great place. Great to hear. Great for us to have you here. <laughs> do you get to learn some Cantonese, like from your teammates? And could you demonstrate some if you do? Unfortunately, no. unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> only swear words. But only swear words. <laughs> pretty sure you don't want to hear. From yeah, me. not from our, from our audience, but that's all you can learn from your teammates. <laughs> so you do understand when two may shouts at you? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, no one shouts at me, but oh. I understand when they yeah. shout. <laughs> true, true, true. Okay. Why did you decide to join the Hong Kong Rangers? I mean, I came here to play football, and yeah. they offered me a contract, so, so that's why. Simple, simple Very reason. Simple. I see. Well, actually, there were some ups and downs for you while you were playing in Hong Kong. Like you were once nominated as the goalkeeper of the year and then for a period of time you're not even registered for anything yeah. yeah so how do you prepare yourself mentally and physically when you don't get to play okay let me maybe clarify oh, about sure. that two years of gap yeah that I had. so what was the story yeah um, i was always thinking mm -hmm. what after football okay because you play football till what, 35 40 right the longest um, and then I was like I was always I was always asking myself what's what's next mm -hmm. because I've seen hundreds of, of cases of my friends who had a good careers earned good money and uh, when they finished with football mm -hmm. after one two years they were broken mm -hmm. they, they didn't know what to do they didn't know uh, how to find themselves in the in normal life because you need to understand when you play football you're, you're basically you live in a bit artificial world because you're protected from every side True. you don't need to do anything because uh, other people are doing it on your behalf True. so some people they don't even know uh, it sounds ridiculous but some football players they finish career in the age of 35 they don't even know how to book flight True. for themselves because they were, they, they've never done that mm. because other people always do that. For them. Right. So, so seeing all those things, uh, um, I was always asking myself, what's the next step? How to make that transition smooth? How to how to prepare myself for the future life? Right. How to do that that thing that I'll feel myself great after I finish football? 
And uh, the first idea I had, and I had it uh, seven years ago, mm -hmm. is to open my football school. Mm. Because I think I have my own vision, I have my ideas, and I would love to implement it. Right. But I've never seen an appropriate place to do that. Mm -hmm. And then when I came here, and uh, I started to play football here, and then I made some research, I walked around, I saw how it works here in terms of youth football. Okay. Um, I saw the football landscape here, and I was like, yeah, that's the proper, the proper place to do. Mm -hmm. And then I loved the life here, and then that's actually why I decided to stay here. Mm -hmm. Um, so everything started with with, uh, with an idea to open a football school, right. and I started it when I, I was still playing for Rangers. Mm. That was my second season for Rangers. Right. So I started the first the first steps in that direction, and then you need to understand that if you start yourself. Mm. You start your channel. You know exactly that exactly. It's, it's not only it's not to, to bring two cameras yeah. and to run an interview with me. You need to, to do a lot of research, a lot of heavy exactly. work, which is the hottest. Right. So you can imagine that to open a football school, it's uh, you need to open a company. You need to, you need to find the first kids, yeah. which is the, 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 the hottest thing. Right. You need to start to do some training sessions. You need to book the pitches, which is the <laughs> biggest struggle biggest. in Hong Kong. Yeah, exactly. You need to know how it works. Yeah. So it was very time consuming. Right. So I started when I was playing, and then I realized that I cannot do it together with playing because if I play, I want to be good at the pitch. Right. I need to be good at the pitch. So I need to be ready for matches. I okay. need to train well. Um, and then football school started to, to take my entire time. Mm -hmm. So then I made a hard decision, but from today's prospect, I think yeah. that was the only proper decision. I'm super happy that I did that. So yeah, sure, sure. I made a break. Yeah. That was weird because I was 29 years exactly. old. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's it's very young for goalkeeper, exactly. and then I make a break to establish my football school. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't play for two seasons. Yeah. That's why I was never registered for these two seasons right. for any team. Mm -hmm. And I just focused for for for, for my school development. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I, I created my first team, mm -hmm. which was playing in Hong Kong FA Youth League. Mm -hmm. Then I also got second, third teams. Then I, I, I started to work with goalkeepers, with outfield players, doing some private classes. Right. So in these two, three years, two years, I established everything. Mm -hmm. And then, and then yeah, and then I decided to get back to, to, to football. And yeah, when I decided to, to have that break, it's not like I decided to finish with football. Right. I never had that thought. Yeah. So I always knew that I'll get back to to play. Mm -hmm. So I also used that time to, to prepare myself, mm -hmm. answering your question. Yeah. So I obtained quite a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I studied in some football-related universities. All right. I got my coaching license here in Hong Kong. Mm. I started to work with a great goalkeeper coach online, who basically changed my vision about a about a goalkeeper position. Okay. I'm extremely happy about that. Um, so I can I can say that uh, I get back to game uh, definitely stronger than, than I was before. So right now I think it was a great decision mm -hmm. because right now I have good mind. I have business that uh, that's running. And I can I can I can focus on, on my game. I can focus on my performance. So all good. Right. So now we look back. We now all understand why you skipped the years so with no regret, right? No, no regret. regret. No regret. Um, you know, it's it actually it started with football school, mm -hmm. but right now, as you can see, it's, uh, there are some other things. Um, I launched my my gloves, yeah. and then. Uh, and then some football apparel. So another thing I'm working out right now, mm -hmm. it's an online project. Okay. It's a huge uh, football online platform mm -hmm. where we will help to all the people who would like to improve their skills. Uh, at the moment, we're doing a content. Mm -hmm. uh, we are recording all the training sessions. Okay. And we're planning to launch in July. Okay. 
So it will be huge. It will be a huge project. Mm -hmm. It will be very interesting and classy for sure. Can't wait to see that. I'm definitely joining that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Besides, as a football player, we know you are also a professional model. Yeah. How do you even start this career, and how different is that for you to work as a model and a football player? Um. Okay. So back in Europe, yeah. I always had some brands in the fashion industry, some oh. designers, some photographers. Yeah. So I also I was like. A football player, so, so so yeah, they they, they ask me sometimes to, oh. to participate in some shootings or or fashion weeks, catwalks or something like this. So I used to, to do it back in the days in Europe, and then when I came here, um, I had a friend here, and she was a uh, one of the top models in Hong Kong. Oh. And just one day, she she asked me if I would be interested because they were they were looking for a model, and then. Why not? And then uh, she gave my contacts and my details to the bookers or photographers, I don't really remember. Mm -hmm. And then you know how it works, word of mouth, and then I just made a first shooting and then uh, photographers photographer liked me and and then he had another campaign so, so he called me I'll be interested and then just doing stuff, uh, you get to know other people. Yeah. And, and yeah. So that's how it started, and uh, right now I can't say that I'm doing a lot in this area, but because I simply I don't have time. Mm -hmm. But if there is an interesting project, uh, the salary is good, I have free time. Uh, I just I just go for it. Or if because uh, I have quite a lot of photographers uh, mm -hmm. as my friends, so they ask me for some underground shooting. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just do it for free, just to help them. Oh, okay. so, yeah. so that's how it works. I see. Okay. When we are arranging this interview, you yeah. have mentioned that you wake up every day at 6 a.m. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, which impressed me a lot, <laughs> which being so disciplined of you. So, could you tell, me, tell us more about your daily routine and do you have a special diet for you to keep yourself fit? So, my routine. I think one of the most important things for a professional athlete, mm -hmm. for me at least, is mm -hmm. to sleep well. Yeah. So I never go to bed later than 11 p.m. Oh, right. So I try my best to go at 10 30. Okay. Because I really need to sleep well to feel yeah. myself good on the next day. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's, it's not a problem for me to wake up early. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, Six, six thirty. That's my that's my usual thing. Mm. Especially that we have a uh, we have morning training sessions with Rangers. Right. So it's 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 absolutely normal for me to wake up at, at six to to make a to make a breakfast for myself, mm -hmm. just to prepare for the session and just go for it. So so my routine, yeah, wake up early morning, breakfast, go for for Rangers training. After that, I come back home, lunch. And then depending on the day, mm -hmm. depending on the day, I might have some sessions with my teams at mm -hmm. my football school. Right. I might have some private classes. I might have some some meetings or, or whatever, depending on my other businesses, mm -hmm. depending on my clubs or online project. Right now, I do quite a lot of shooting for my online project for pro, for pro play skills. Right. Um, because I need to, I need to film 46 training sessions. It's very oh. time consuming. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's very time consuming. Right. So that's something that uh, takes my time right now. Um, otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I have, I have dinner around 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then, and then I also have some admin work at home. Oh, right. That evening, and then I just go to bed, prepare myself for another day. Um, in terms of diet, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely, mm -hmm. I, I don't eat. Uh, Quite, quite many things that really? usually, <laughs> usually people eat, yeah. but um, uh, I don't drink. Huh. I don't drink uh, any any sweet. Uh, oh, okay. The only thing I drink is water. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't don't really eat some sugar things mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, I prefer to cook for myself. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, but as soon as you do it regularly, it's not any tough. It's, 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 because it, that's just a part of your life. So. I think I think every every professional athlete 
sweets. So, mm. so it's just normal. Very impressive, I have to say. <laughs>